thank you so much for coming on this journey with us as we answer and share a few insights on the question of how to home educate the child in the state of Colorado. Now, I want you to be very mindful that all you have to do is remove the state of Colorado and put your state in this scenario if you are listening outside of Colorado. But for an example, this one is absolutely talking about Colorado and the guideline is gonna speak to that. So on this webinar, you're going to learn where to start when you have the question of how to um, educate your child in your state. You're gonna learn how to inform your school, how to enjoy your decision. And we have some bonus information and I'm gonna be sharing how I can support you. So who am I? My name is Marsha Michael. I'm a wife, mother. I'm a mother of a child with special challenges. I'm a home educator, a homemaker, founder, and teacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I model a successful life of service and I inspire others to do the same within their relationships, homeschooling, or for me, I call it, to call it home education, parenting, or life as a special needs caregiver. And so this is my, um, my link through my social connection. If you're listening on the podcast, it's https uh, dot colons forward slash link three dot ee forward slash wygum. And you can also look in the show notes and you'll find them there as well. So I'm going to go right in it because we know time is limited. And I'm so grateful that you take your time out to listen in on how to home educate your child. Well, as I said before, this is near toward Colorado, but if you are in whatever state, then you look up the information, uh, especially like the guideline and so for your state, which is the guideline and the homeschooling guideline in that state is going to be critical. Otherwise, everything else is kind of empowering you, right? So where do you start? Start with your why. Why have you decided to take your child education in your hands? And so it's key to start right there because if you don't know why you're doing it, then you ain't going to have anything to support you on your journey when the challenges of life or changes or stuff like that happen. So start with your why, right? It's just like if you're going somewhere, you wouldn't just pick yourself up and go to the grocery store without knowing why you're going down there. So why do you want to take your child's education into your hand at this time? And so you make a list of that, right? So you can see your why clearly in front of you because as we go further down, we're going to learn or we're going to put our why into perspective here. The next thing you want to think about is to consult with your spouse, right? Consult with your spouse because doing so, it put both of you on the same page, right? Because now only if, you know, you have like a business at home, working from home kind of deal, right? If you're, if you don't have a business or working from home, then it's going to definitely need conversation communication in both ways, regardless. But then when you have the conversation, you're going to know who is going to be in charge of the educating, education of the child, right? You have to have that conversation because then if you love a business at home, you're working or you're working from home, then there's going to be only one parent uh, bringing in the finance. And so we want to have a good conversation around, around, around those critical key, key points, right? So consult with your spouse. So you might say you're, might be, you're probably one of the parents or the caregivers 
who are a single parent. So either way, consult with you, right? Or have your support system. Now, when you have your support system and you go to the support sy system, that person, he or she might have a lot of inputs, right? But always remember that it comes back to your why. Why did you want to do this? Why do you want to go on this journey? Why do you want to know deciding that you're going to educate your child in the comfort of your home? So whatever your support system is, consult he, she, or them, or know that you have to rely on whatever decision that you want to make, whatever your why is. So have that clear communication. And so, as I said, it can be with your spouse. So if you're a single parent, you consult your, your circle, and then you always remember to come right back to your why, right? And so um, write a clear statement of your family vision. What is it? So let's say you consult your, with your spouse, so you make this decision. What's that clear vision that you're seeing around this decision? Probably, for example, it could be, uh, we see where the child need a closer walk, right? The child need more time and attention to catch up on some skills, to build some skills, probably to build reading. Whatever it is that you, uh, your, 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 your why is, have a clear uh, vision or a statement or something written around that, right? Or Think about your family values, your family dreams or aspirations, or the uniqueness of your family and, and its, its structure and what's best for your family at this time. And so you go from that place and you make your statement, your vision statement. Why? Because this vision statement, as I said in the, in the beginning, this is going to guide your decision. It's going to guide the actions that you take. It's gonna help you in making uh, solid decisions, right? It's gonna help with perseverance and when challenging time comes, because then will come. You might say, Masha, what are some of the challenging uh, times that can come? For example, suppose, let's say, one of the spouse, the only working spouse got ill or lost the job. There's a lot of reshuffling, reorganizing, replanning that needs to put in place. But and, and at the same time, the child's education needs to continue. So therefore, adjustments have to be made quickly, okay? So when you have the vision statement, it can remind you of, why were we doing this? Okay, we were doing this because uh, little Susie or little Johnny needed a closer walk with building his skills. He needed that nurturing or probably you disregard some of the things that we're seeing in society right now and what they're teaching our kids in the school. And you said, you know what? I don't want to uh, continue to expose my son or my daughter to this kind of um, mess. So you choose in otherwise. So whatever it is, make your statement, right, guys. And then let me let me let me let me pause to say this. When you decided to home educate your child or home school, whichever word you want to use, always remember that the decisions you make is solely up to you. And this webinar is not to tell you how to do it like Marsha does it or your friend on the road do it. No, you're going to do it based on your decision, your reason, your why, your family mission, values, or statements, or whatever it is that a decision that you made that causes you to make this decision. Go by that. Go by that. And make adjustments as you need be. Okay, so make the decision known. The next thing is to make the decision known. So we just cover um, where to start. We said, you know, start with your why. 
talk with your spouse, write out that statement that's going to give you the focus that you need when challenging times come, right? And so you can go back and make quick adjustment with less stress. And so we can move on to give little Johnny and Susie is our, our own education as you go along. So you make, so you, you start, where to start? And then, so now let's go make, make a decision now, right? So you have that all settled. You come to an agreement that this is what you want to do. So the second thing would be um, how to inform your, your school. You're going to make it be known. So the first is the second thing or the place where you're going to do is inform the school. Now, for different states might have different regulation and all to, right? Probably your state is not to inform the school, but is to probably write a letter or something. So follow the guideline of your state, plug the state in of all what to do what are their requirements, okay? So how to inform the school? Inform the school of the decision that you and your family has made. Or you may say, but Basha is my own decision anyway, because my spouse, he or she is afraid, right? Or, but there's, we already established that there's got to be some mutual understanding and communication that took place prior, because the this is a child for the, you know, benefit of the family and the child's um, best interest and so on. There's a mutual communication and understanding that we established before. So now you're going to inform the school of a decision that he made. Now, you, when you decided to um, educate, no, you're not asking the school permission. Can I um, educate little Johnny or can I um, educate little Susie? No, you're not. No, you make that decision at home, right? With your loved one, with your spouse, or with your, 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 your trusted folks. And so now you're going to just inform them of this decision. So it's a, it's a huge, it's a big difference, right? As to all you're going to go up to the school and, 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 or to the, 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 the office, the district office, I know you're going to relay that, right? And that's why you, you solidify the decision, decision first before you go over to the school. And so you go over to the school and you're, you know, asked to ask for whoever, whomever you need to talk to. And you said, hey, we're making a decision that we're going to home educate little Johnny or little Susie. And so I'm asking you to give me the place for the farm, the form in which you want to turn in in the state of Colorado. And so here's where you have to know. Think about wherever your state is. Ask, in the state of Colorado, ask for the home study notification form. That's what it's called in our state. And I checked the information, it was like this state, it was still the same. So ask for the home study notification form. In your state, in your other outside of Colorado, then you have to find out what that form will be called when you go to the office, okay? The next thing you can do is uh, the school may have it or if the school doesn't have it, then you go to the district office and ask them for the form. Now, as I said, if you go, if you have to report to the school where the child is coming from, if you have to go down to the school and say, hey, um, this is our decision to um, educate, I don't think that, there's nothing on the form here the home study notification form that says you have to tell them your whole reason why, All right? Look, you have decided to take this uh, education of your child in your hands. And so you don't have to relay the depth of what and your why. Because I I, when I look at the form here, I didn't say any depth like that. And you know what? Just save the details. Save the details for, for you. This is a time now where you... You, you don't have to be asking permission. You just basically step in there to give a notice, okay? And so, so you have to go to the school. So is that you go to the school where the child is coming from or you go to the district office. So let's start with the school where the child is coming from and you go there with the, the intent to inform them that you want the home study notification form because you have made a decision to home educate, right? 
So then we get a form, you fill the form out, you know, form need to be signed by both parents or see there, you know, for the one that I look at, the one that I use here in Colorado is both parents, right? And so that's why you have to have that conversation, right? It might say, but, you know, we don't have both parents. You will seek out that, you know, anything that's, you know, the fine part that make it, you know, more difficult or whatever your situation is, adjust as accordingly. And so you fill out the form and both of you turn, turn the form in or you turn, or one parent turn the form in. As I said, check into what your, your, your state require. And voila, congratulations. You have solidified your decision. So I would say celebrate. Celebrate this new journey of adventure, fun, and learning. One of the things I have to also interject here before I go on to oh. Or to um to enter the decision is ensure that the child knows what's going on. Ensure that the child has some input into this family decision that surrounded this child. Well, you might say, but Marsha, my child is three. Hey, you talk to little Susie and little Johnny, even if it's he or she's three, because they can understand. Right, so you have that conversation and that dialogue because now this is going to be this journey of you know family conversation and showing Johnny or Susie that you care about his or her's opinion into this family decision to home educate, right? Include them into it because can you imagine the big surprise that the child would get? If you didn't say anything, right? If you didn't say anything, it's going to become like a, a huge shock. Why don't I can I go back to my, my little school? I'm going to miss my friends and all of that. And so that's why we need to ensure that I have the conversation and the information put together so that we can always go back to the, the why, right? Why did the family need to make this uh, information? And as I said, it's going to be a, a journey of fun, you can make it fun, you can make it creative, and you can do this from the comfort of your own. Do it on your vacation, building the fun inside of all of what your family does, right? And as I love to remind myself and my kids is that learning never goes on pause. It never pauses because there should be a need for constant information, facts, going into the brain at all time so it can continue to to build the dendrites right and have that awesome experience on a daily basis right and so that's why i call it well, prefer to call it home education and not home schooling so we inform the school we pick the form up uh, we figure out if we need to get it from the school if the front desk person or we need to go down to the district office and then you get the form signed up. Little Johnny or Susie knows what's going on. Have an input, have a say, take those things in consideration. And so next thing you turn the form in and then you're gonna celebrate because this is a new journey. And it's also good to get into the habit of celebrating because now only you and your family and your surrounding is going to be responsible to bring out the celebratory moments in your home and in your child life right so congratulations congratulate yourself you are on a path that's going to be awesome and so how do you enjoy this decision hmm. is it possible to enjoy this decision yes it is possible you know what you want for your family. You know the desires. You know your child's uniqueness. So now that you take this journey, you thought it up. Think about it. You discuss it. You turn that form in. You solidify your decision. You are, in, you are celebrating this new journey, right? 
you get to enjoy your decision, right? So now you are officially on a beautiful journey to enjoy your child, a well-rounded, give your child a well-rounded experience. You're like, Marsha, I don't know if that's possible. Of course it's possible. No one's better than home. And so, yes, you might say, okay, so some parents might not do this. Some parents might not do this. Let's focus on you right now. You only can focus on your action here. Right? Anything outside of that, you're going to be judgmental and so on. And if you need to ramp something up, let's focus on what you need to do differently. Right? So you are officially on this journey, right? You make the decision. Right? You are officially in charge of your child's education, your child's learning experience. You are fully in charge now to create those teachable moments, right? Those corrective moments, those learning and involvement experience. It's just so beautiful. Those moments where you use um, open-ended questions to your child. The, the moments where your child comes with something and is curious and they said, you know what? Let us all be curious. Let me go do some research on that. Or you're on this journey where your child come and they start to ask some questions. And he said, okay. So the minute these questions start to come up, then that's also a part that's going to be a part of the lesson. So you add things in, in the in the in the um on the plan, the plan that you're going to establish, right? And so you are not doing school in your home, is another thing. So don't sweat it. Nope, don't sweat it. You're not trying to be like the school district. You're not trying to be like your, your teacher from, your, 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 your little Johnny or Susie's teacher from first, second, or third grade. Absolutely not. You're the mama. You're the daddy. You're the caregiver, right? You understand your child. Or if you don't, you should be learning to understand that child's uniqueness, his voice, his taste, his style. Right right and so you get to weave all of that into the learning if you have a child who love lego building and you inquire and you you observe and you inquire you ask those opening the questions so what do you want to do or Jenny, you know susie wait what do you want to do when you grow up and she said you know i love to build legos then start to pay attention to that or start to structure reading around Legos, you know, history around um, inventors, mathematics around Lego pieces, division, whatnot, the creativity of it, you get to, to do that. And so you, you, can, you can tailor or just set up programs and experiences for that child. Let's say there's you, your child like to cook, right? Who in the town has a restaurant or a bakery or something where food is being prepared? That, that child, you can ask to have your child come on in and do a little shadowing, watch, observe, probably, you know, dust the, the front of the, of the, of the, the shop or, Something like that that you can get his hands on experiences, right? Or do more of the cooking. Maybe this one child like to bake. So every week there is a baking segment that's happening, right? You get to do all of those creative pieces. There's a constant learning and growing and, and mixing and matching. Yes, you might say, but for much of what I'm doing, the core stuff. Of course, the core are important. However, we are building this child likes. We are introducing new skills, right? So don't sweat it. You're educating your child at home now. So I would say the next thing would be build on a solid foundation. Yep. Oh, I might hear somebody say, what way much like you must say my number on the solid foundation before? No, I'm not saying that. But I know you're now taking on a new journey and you have solidified your decision. And so we're saying that you get to 
redo some things, right? You get to, I didn't do over kind of deal, right? And so what is that solid foundation going to look like? Are we, is your family a family who believes in, in God and you realize that, you know what, we didn't get enough of who God is taught in the schools to each to little Susie and little Johnny. So now you get to build another foundation because we believe that a child need, we need spiritual growth and development. And how many of us can attest to the fact that in certain settings, our children are not getting that. So much confusion around that, but you get to do it now for your home, for your family, according to your why, according to your vision for your family, right? So set that foundation. What will your foundation scripture be? What will it be? So yeah, I'm going to share two with you. And so you're going to find your unique one, right? What is it it's going, that's going to be your foundation and scripture that your own educational program is going to be built on? I was like, Masha, but I never even think about that. No, you get to think about it. Okay? You get to think about it now because if you believe that your child needs physical education, nutritional education, social um, in education, and all of that, you, you know, now you get the chance to put in your spiritual education so your child can build upon that so you can get to know you know who his maker is who, who is he why did he create us right what am i supposed to be doing right that's outside of myself and so what is what the foundation scripture going to be i want the beautiful thing about this i want to i want to reiterate i want you to also remember that you get to choose that for your family. So for me, it's Deuteronomy 6, 47. It said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I commanded you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and talk of them when you sit in your house mm -hmm. and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. We should be teaching the word of God to our children, right? When we lie down, when we're on the way, when you're going by. So the beautiful thing about being an home educator, I get to do that. We get to do that with our children. When we're walking by, when we sit down to eat, we get to say grace. When we jump in the car to go to the street, we get to pray over the trip, right? When we when we sit down to study the Bible and read about, you know, for in Genesis, the creation story, and knowing who God is, we get to read the Tanakh. We get to read the Bible. We get to look at the word of God. And so that would be a perfect, to me, that would be a perfect example of teaching them diligently to your children, right? When you're going by, when you're lying down, before they go to bed, you're praying. What is your scripture, foundational scripture? That's going to be a part of your education program, your family structure and values, right? I could think of another one, didn't put it on this, but I could think of Joshua, right? Joshua says, um, as for me and my old soul, we are going to serve the Lord. What is your scripture going to be? I don't get to tell you, but you get to choose that based on your family values right? and the foundation know that you name for your program. Or another scripture I could, that I could sh I'm sharing is Proverbs, Proverbs 16 and 3. It says, Ask the Lord to bless your plans and you will be successful in carrying them out. Hmm. We're talking about what your foundation of scripture is going to be. So when we decided 
uh, to, to home educate her kids. We did exactly what I'm telling you, I'm telling you about right now. There was a situation, you might say, but why did you even start to educate? Anyway, I know I did not say anything about um, our why, right? But it's not about me right now. This is about you. But our why came right in the time of the, the pandemic. And there was so much shuffling and buffering about what to do with the kids. And then they throw them online. And, and then that was a huge mess. Teachers were frustrated, parents were frustrated, kids were like, just please let us be free. And so we had us to make a decision. Just like what I'm telling you top there in number one, first thing. We have to come to grips with our why. We talk together, my husband and I, we have a conversation. We talk with the kids. And we say, this is what we're going to be doing. This is what we think is the best thing right now. We can, we can, you know, only learn some skill. We can teach some more things that we think you guys need, right? We can sharpen up reading, we can sharpen up writing skills. And we look at all of the benefits. We can have more time together, right? We can get to focus more on things that we know that you're good at your creative ideas you can work on them you work on the core stuff you get your chores done you get the rest of the day to work on your skills and the stuff that we see that you like for an example our, our, our son love lego building very engineer mind and so what we do center the stuff around uh, his, his, his likes and give him the time and opportunity to build on his mechanical skills. When you ask me, what do you want to do and be? You want to be a mechanic. Okay. So all the things that he's building and he's designing and all of that stuff become something that will work into the, into the projects, right? So he can kill, still keep his interests and his likes, right? Another one, well, things that we do, we incorporate more reading. We go down into the history, history books, right? And we pull those books out and we get different curriculums that we love. We vet them, we see them, we look at who the authors are, we look at the comments, right? The feedbacks and all of that. So it's a beautiful journey, right? So will we do it over again? Yes, we send the journey. We're still on the journey, guys. And so thank you so much for listening in. Thank you so much for being curious, right? This is about you and how to home, home educate in your state. This we're talking about the state of Colorado, right? And so the fifth thing that we'll, I'll say, write a vision statement. And that's why I was saying that you need that from in the, in the, in the beginning is your why. Why you want to do this? Right, and so now you determine why you have to do this. While making this, this decision to um, educate little Johnny, little Susie, right? And so the vision statement, you write a clear vision statement of your family vision. What are you envisioning? What is it, right? And this statement, statement will guide your actions and this decision making and perseverance. Yep, when challenging time comes, because they will come. And so when they come, we don't want to be sitting and, and, and moping and staring too long. You want to get in action because they'll join your Susie, depending on you to course correct, navigate, create experiences, right? So this statement is going to guide your actions and eliminate delays and drawn out stress because you, you're in charge of this thing. Right? And so dream big with your child. What does your child want to learn and explore? You're not trying to be that teacher. Mm -mm. You're not trying to be the first, second, third, or little Johnny's sixth grade teacher or Susie's seventh grade teacher. No, your mama, your daddy, your caregiver, your aunt, whoever is in the child's life. Right? Dream big with the child. 
be curious, observe your child, right? Be willing to explore topics. My goodness, it's, 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 it's vast, right? Give them new information. There's a saying that says, uh, give kids facts and they'll figure it out. Just make sure it's, it's facts. You understand that's a whole different um, teaching we, we, we could do at a whole different auto, right? So dream big with your child. What is the child interest? Do, is, is little Susie interested in cooking? She's on cooking duty one, two or so time a week. And the beautiful thing about that is you get to set it up right around the curriculum. So let's say she love cooking. So you get to incorporate um, healthy eating. You get to incorporate shopping and budgeting. So she don't gonna budget, we're gonna shop for the food, foods and vegetables and whatever it is. You get to um, incorporate good home making skills, right? Food handling skills, how to you know take care of the refrigerator, how to wash them vegetables and fruits uh, well, how to not mix you know vegetable and, and raw meat together, how to wash your meat. All those stuff becomes a part of the learning process and problem solving. There's just so much things that comes from watching and observing a child's interest and do stuff to support the growth and development of that child skill, right? Decide what you want to teach. Decide what you want to teach. Do it together. Let's say you have some preteens or your, your child is now a, a teenager, right? They're going to start getting curious because the brain is developing. And so you don't want them to go search on the internet and you know them looking at certain things, but now bring the sex education in a healthy, clean, and a wholesome setting and language. Find resources that's that you vetted, right? And and bring the awareness. When the child comes to you and, and get curious, um, find out what they're thinking about. And when they get curious, both of you could be learning about that topic. Mm -hmm. I still pull up my biology notes and use it to support my children's curiosity and or um, growth and development. Mm -hmm. Weave it inside of it. Make it fun. Make it be fun. Right? And so, yeah, you get to enjoy this process and this decision that you and your, your family has made. Right? So, so you have the vision right there. Set some goals. Now you understand where you want the journey you want to go and set some goals. Set some goals up. And it don't have to be complicated, right? You could just have one goal for for month, for this month, right? And you stretch it over the course of the week. You could have so much little things to put inside there, right? This is what we want to accomplish for the, for the month. For example, for the month of August, we are doing an exploration, right? And freedom investigation. I'm just going on that journey of exploring, right? And freedom. And so why that? The idea is that the month of August signif signifies for us in our culture, in our country, um, freedom, freedom from slavery emancipation from slavery. So we have like about two major holidays that happen. Emancipation Day, August 1st. Which country are we talking about? Beautiful island of Jamaica. They have Emancipation Day celebration, August 1st. And then they have the Independence Day, August 6th. So we say, all right, we want to intertwine some, um, some exploration Let's, let's investigate what happened into these into these countries and the surrounding um, places and other states or so or countries that's having the the the, uh, the independence and so on, right? And we're doing this this exploration journey. So, who are some explorers, right? What does explorers need if they're going on a trip? So we have activities. We're going to be building a explorer explorer's kit. I have no clue what is supposed to be in that. 
but we're going to do it together. And I want to see the kids' creativity. What are you going to put together? Right? And so that's kind of like you do it. And you have stuff we do on a daily basis, stuff we do on weekly. And then you arrive at the month, right? The end of the month, then you have a big project from that. What did you learn? What were you curious about? What, what new um, foods or recipes that you find from these countries that, you know, explorers have visited before or this, this country or states that experience or celebrate some form of independence or freedom from slavery or emancipation from other countries, whatever it is, what do you find? What are some cool pictures? What are some cool animals, right? So you mix it up, set some goals. So this month you want to do exploration and freedom. Hmm? What's going to be next month? The kids have some cool ideas. So I bank those ideas, right? And so when next one come, we we'll go back in, I'll go back into the, the idea bank and I'll say, okay, what do you want to do? Do you still interested? And they might say, oh, we want to do something different. Let's go. Give the children facts, okay? And so you might like, okay, so we're enjoying this journey. So what about the states? All right, here is what about the state. Then you're going to download. And again, this is for specific to Colorado. Download the own school guideline for Colorado. If you're in, let's say you're in California, download the own school guideline for California, right? And you read through that, that big boy, all right? Let me see. You can, so you just you click on it, you open it up. I'm not going to go all the way in it right now, but because um, I want to be respectful of time. So I put the link right there. And so you're just going to, um, you know, click on the link and you read through the guideline, the homeschooling guideline. And when you click into it, you're going to realize that it has different um, expectations. All right, let me just, I'll go back in my word. Let me just click on it real quick. And so this is the one, this one is for Colorado, the home school in Colorado, right? So I'm imagining if you are in whatever your state is, you, you click, you look up for it like that, and it's going to show up your name or whoever the design is. So um, the home school is an overview right here. And they tell you, um, getting started with home school, uh, letter, so there it is. They talk about the letter of intent must be submitted. Okay? And so you read through carefully and print, I would say print it off so you can, you know, read timely if you have to highlight something and so on. They talk about assessment, right? But the state of Colorado is not responsible for all that. You are in charge. And so you have to put things in place, but it's kind of walk you through um, how you can, you can do that, right? And then there is additional um, questions and re resources and so on. But I would say, don't break too much sweat. You have nurtured, cared for, and bring this child in this world. Or whether you're um, a foster parent, a step parent, um, a bonus parent, a adaptive parent, whatever whatever role that you play in this child, this child's life, right? As a nurturer, you have committed to nurture and to care and to bring this child up, uh, right? And so, and we talked about foundation scriptures, right? And as I, as I said, bring the child up, I thought about one scripture, foundational scripture. It could be to bring up the child into the fear and admonition of the Lord. Here's one more. What is your foundational scripture? I we'll talked about that earlier. And so you go to the guideline and you download it and you read through, print it off, read through, click on where you want to click on. There's a lot of information out there. So you have to just like narrow it down and keep your focus, right? 
And let's say you have the vision and you have that huge statement of your why statement, keep those um, in front of you. Keep those, help, use that to help you focus because there's a lot of noise, okay? And so you're not trying to be like nobody else. You are just trying to do the best for the child, for your family, your ideal family. And that's what you, you, you're creating right now. And so, and so you do, download the, the guideline for homeschool, and then you're going to download the Colorado guide guideline, okay? Download the Colorado guideline. And so it's the same thing. You're going to click there, and you click on, on, the, on the link, um, the Colorado, or whatever state you are, right? Whatever state you are, that's the state standard and instruction and guideline you went to be looking for. Um, find it, find it, I'm going to open it and show you. But find the child's grade, open the link, browse through, right? Click on those hyperlinks. And re remember why you went to the page in the first place. You're looking for the guideline because, of course, the guideline is a guide, right? Open the link, browse it, print it off, right? The list, um, there will be the list. They listed the subjects that are expected and the core subject and so on and there are expectations and, and so on that's there, right? But use, use this as a guide to cover your core subjects, right? I'm going to open it and show you. But thank you so much if you're listening on the podcast. The, the, the link will be in the show notes. So if you need, you can just click on things and look around. But um, what I think I think I was gonna do. I think I should because I know you got. I know you have a lot of questions. I know it. You have a lot of questions, and I would love to answer them questions. So I'm gonna also add the email address in which way you can send me an email. Um, send me a question via email. Marshall Michael at gmail.com. That's M A R S H A. W E I G U M at gmail.com. And so don't be limited. For example, you might say, you know, the guidelines said math, English, music, dancing, um, geography, that's, you know, computer. Oh, well, we don't start computer yet anyway. They don't have anything that said in high school, mommy. No. You don't say computer yet? Add something. Because, I mean, the kids are computer smart. Anyway, they're technology smart. So find, as the home educator, no, your, your job now is to find programs that you can probably, you know, subscribe to or free programs and have your child learn or learn together, right? And they're, they're very, very, very brilliant. Our kids are brilliant, okay? I love the beautiful brain beautiful dendrites being built. So now you get a chance, you make a decision to build dendrites with facts, okay? And so um, don't be limited by anything. Don't be limited by anything. Add subjects that your child, your child is interested in, expose them to books and um, uh, LTPDF, a story and so on. Have, you know, a couple of subscriptions if you can, um, I love the Daily Wire so, uh, subscription. I did that, so some facts and such that you get off of it on YouTube, but the, the presenter can only do the full amount and another, the other platform. So, you know, have a subscription. And in that way, if it's, you know, once you say it's credible, you vet it as it's credible, then that's the kind of um, current affair channel I would, you would guide your child to, right? And so I'm going to say any questions, but my goodness, I know you have a lot of questions, right? And so you're going to email me them. Or if it's, if you're listening on the podcast, just drop me uh, some comments right there on YouTube, put in a comment, or reach out to us, marshawagum at gmail.com. Um, and so we're covering auto-home school, 
your home to, or to home, educate your child in or children in the state of Colorado, but this is true for any state that you're in, just remove the state and find the guideline for home school homeschoolers or the um, the state that you're in guideline for the core and expectations and so on. Right? And so the sky is the limit, friends. The sky is the limit. So don't and don't even limit the kids. Okay. Right? We're just going to build beautiful dendrites and flourish and set up the environment for learning. And everything up in your home is a moment for learning, right? It's just beautiful. So I have some bonus info for you, okay? So the possibilities are endless. Don't burst a sweat, okay? Don't burst a sweat. Be guided by your why. Be guided by your vision. Be guided by your, your, um, your goals, be guided by your foundational scripture and your, your, your values and so on, right? Be guided by those cores, right? Be guided by what you want to change in your family dynamics. Mm -hmm. There's some things you know, like in our family growing up, you don't want to repeat those things, right? You got to break them out. But what are you bringing to, the, to your family for the better? So that your child can and be, you know, emulate good ideas and strategies and ways to build the home, to build the community and society. And when they have their families, it is one beautiful goodness. Okay. And so the possibilities are endless. So much of sweat, don't worry. That's not gonna help with anything. Be guided by that vision, that mission, right? You have um, every curiosity is a chance to teach a, a lesson or a topic, right? Build a community or join one. I like building one, right? And so build a community around your vision, your family, your mission, and your why, right? And your value system. Hmm? Because you're modeling for your child what you would love to see. You might not you might not see it, but you are modeling. Because they're gonna take some, they're gonna leave some. That's what's supposed to happen. Right? So research curriculum you like and customize it, right? Are your people to teach subject matters your child need help with? Let's say your child need um music, piano, some deep stuff, some, you know, maybe the child wants to, want to play the violin. Right? Or you just don't, you know, get the, the, the depth of the maths things, right? I have somebody you know, maybe it's a maybe it's a high schooler who is very um gifted in 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 the numbers, right? Maybe it's somebody who really wise at um accounting, whatever it is, you can add that now. Maybe somebody is great at finance, right? The you know real estate. What I'm trying to say, maybe you know Miss Miss Susie. Oh, she she's a real estate realtor, a little woman, our man, who is willing to sit down and to teach a thing or two. Bring them in, all right. And so, ah uh, yes, I have people to teach subject matters, do research, right? Every every moment is a teachable moment. Every moment is a teachable moment. Everything around the house is and around the home is a moment to teach a lesson. Okay. Let's say you have a ranch. It's an opportunity to teach the lesson of taking care of animals, feeding, cleaning up, right? Grooming. Maybe you have a, a sheep farm. Right, them kids can learn to share, share the you know the wool of the 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 um the the sheep, or maybe you own a, a restaurant. Whatever it is, use that teachable moment, right? And then everything, yeah, teachable moment. Fall in love with open-ended questions. Don't just throw things out at them, because we're building dendrites, we're building the brain, right? 
So he'll, you know, let's say, um, or son, come up and he's like, mom, so what do you think, what do you think is going to happen when um, global warming, right? Or some current affair, what do you think is gonna happen? I said, you know what, let me hear what you think. And then they're gonna sprout off, you know, their thought, you know, they're gonna talk about this, they're gonna, and you grab some things from it and listening. And then from you listening, then you probably ask one more open-ended question. So why do you think those five things is gonna happen in the society within that time frame, right? And so you feed him back. And so you're giving him a he or she a, a time to think out loud, right? Opening the question, as I said, everything around the home is a teachable moment, right? Everything in the community is an opportunity to volunteer, to raise funds, to do fundraising for, right? to stop by the, the elderly home and drop off some flowers, to save, to donate, stuff like that, okay? And then the next, the next bonus uh, info I have in there, schedule activities and interests around your family activities. So let's say Christmas is coming up, right? And you guys always wanted to go hang out with the family and go visit. You want to spend some more time. But no, because we're home educating now, we can go to grandma's house probably two weeks in advance for the Christmas rush, right? Or we can go there right before the week of Christmas and we get that extra week when, you know, grandma set up and so on. But then you build the lesson around all of that, right? You build, build it, whether it's going to be a plane, airplane ride, or it's going to be a bus ride, a car ride, or a family driving up, whatever it is, or you're going to, you know, do part camping, part hotel, whatever is going to happen along the journey, make it a teachable moment, make it an educated and an explorative moment, right? So if we're going to go by train, okay, we've got to learn something about train. Who was the founder of train? That's the Easter part. Right, um, the first guy who came up with it, right? How fast as a train goes, right? So fact that how many seats is on the train? Who, who conduct the train? That kind of thing, right? Build up, build uh, the experience around that so it can still leave the home carry the learning because the learning is continuous. Learning is continuous. My kids know that we don't, we don't take, we don't take out of there. And then you tell me, are you gonna learn in lock off? I can't, I can't wrap my brain around it. I don't want to wrap my brain around that. No, because we have a brain and we want to give it facts every single day. Okay, right? So, Every moment, the brain grow by use. The brain grow by use. So you use it continuously, right? And so schedule activity around that. Um, know your child's interest and then support it. Hmm? Of course, you're in charge. You are the leader. So you're going to help guide this child. Go to child pace. Look, if you need to repeat our... our um, redo a lesson two or three times until a child understands, grasp it, right? Do it. Because it's not about running down the grades. It's about running down the learning and ensuring that the dendrites connect, that they want the fire and the wire. And we strengthen them and it becomes stronger and stronger. And then the learning happens, right? So you're not doing school at home this is not school this is our home and we're going to support our child our children in this environment for the growth and the development so that they can become who god created them to be okay be patient and kind with yourself 
Be patient and kind with yourself. 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 Because if we don't, it's going to show. It's going to show in our body language. It's going to show in our language. It's going to show in our attitude. It's going to show in everything. And it has nothing to do with it, Johnny or with Susie. Right? It's just going to spill out. Be patient with yourself. And when you are being patient with yourself, kindness with you, right? I'm not trying to be um, Miss Teacher Tolo or Miss Teacher Ryan. Then you understand, oh, I'm Susie's mom. I'm Johnny's mom or aunt, caregiver, bonus mom, bonus dad, whatever that is, right? And so be patient. So you can be patient with this child and have learning fun, right? Learn together. And the next thing is some um, resources here. These are bonus stuff right here. Um, some resources here you can look at, depends on where you're at, it is the Life of Fred Mathematics Curriculum. Um, and then the Life of Fred series, you can check them all out. I love the Life of Fred because it gives a wide array of information in one setting. You learn something about English language, you learn a new word about spelling, you learn about some history, some geo, right? Some calculation, a little bit of algebra, all in a one scenario, one chapter. So check out the life of Fred. And then um, I was introduced to the Finland education system. I'm still reading through it because it says very um, different, is unique. So I'm trying to see what would be beneficial to my family that I can take, I can learn and implement in our way of teaching our kids, help them build their dendrites, right? Their brain, brain go by use. And so we have the self-authoring program by Jordan Peterson. You and a child can do this mapping here. Map your past, present, your future. It will be awesome for um, our, our teenagers. I myself use it. My teen, my teens use it. And so check it out. And the program is very affordable. Well, Jordan Peterson, self-authoring program. And you get to write your autobiography. You get to, uh, you know, write, uh, you know, your past and so on where you're at right now. And we're aspiring for it's just a it's a plan, and I like I love it, and so Jordan Peterson also wrote a, uh, a two books that I know of so far and been looking at them. One is called Twelve Rules for Life, right, and then the next one is Twelve More Rules for Life. So check out Jordan Peterson. I love uh, the book The Road to Wigan Pair. My kids are reading it. And yet, I know it's very, um, if it's not a history in it, but why not? Why not? So this is what I'm talking about. You get to research and see what's going to suit your needs, right? And so I would say congratulations. Oh, I'll try to hear some uh, frequently asked questions. I'm going to click on this one. So you can hear some questions that people frequently ask. What should I know about homeschooling? Do you have those questions as well? Because if you do, I can also do uh, more uh, videos, more auto. Or do I register my homeschool program? And then answer it right there, right? You're so totally responsible. And so some of the things that will hinder you from taking um, a step forward, you'll realize that hmm, it's not a challenge anyway. It's just simply mean you make a decision, you give a notice, and you follow the guideline and so on expectations, and you just keep moving forward teaching a child. You're capable anyway. Where do I get textbook, curricular tests, and other material to homeschool my child? Hey, they're everywhere. You just have to do the research and um, see what you want, where you want to teach, you know, pull on your resources, your community, build one or join one, 
and make it as less stressful for you, the caregiver, the teacher, the parent, as possible. Okay? What are the cost of homeschooling materials? If you're going to go I take and do your thing, you know, various things are going to cost various um, um, coins, right? What requirement or qualification must I have to homeschool my child? Hey, are you a caring, are you a parent or a caring caregiver who's loving, patient, see yourself as a learner? Okay. Can model what you're asking the other person to do? You qualify. Can a child be uh, safer on you? Can we trust you? Are you adult enough, responsible enough to know that if you're ill, not feeling well, something going on, overly stressed, can you honestly say, you know what, I cannot do this today? And probably reach out to your support system so that this child will not endure anything harmful or dangerous or right so you will be qualified but examine you first examine you first and so the question goes on and on right what are the requirements for attendance right the program shall include no less than 72 days of instruction averaging four instructional contact hours per day at least four hours look we we have um from the kids I, my philosophy our philosophy every moment is a teachable moment but when we sit down to work we swear we're doing over we're doing more than four hours so don't limit your child to the four hours but that's what the guideline requires you understand but when you're a parent understand that every moment is a teachable moment right? Every waking moment is a teachable moment. Then you are all up, up for building dendrites and strengthening connections in the brain constantly. Constantly. Every moment is a teachable moment. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. Keep on building on it, okay? And so the questions. And everything continues. So that's kind of like it not go to everything. You know, know, know your know your school, your state's requirements, and then you go from there. So congratulations. You did it. You asked the question, how to home educate in Colorado. And so I put it on my schedule and take some time and thought about it and I go back and pick up the few information and put it together and here we are sharing it. But also remember that if you are outside of Colorado, just plug in where your state is and then take the rest of the encouragement and some and then go create yours. This is not for you to, you know, okay, let's do it like this, this, no. Don't break no sweat. You get a chance to create your program, your own educational journey based on your uniqueness, your family values, your situation, right? So you just learn how to start, how to inform your school, how to enjoy your decision and some bonus information frequent questions that ask and some answers for them. And I also want to let you know how I can support you. I would love for you to book a time with me if you have some questions, my goodness. I know you have a lot of questions and I would love to hear them. And so you can reach out with me, book a session with me and you know, click on my link tree, um, link right here. Is, link tree and then you go to um uh marsh power says marsh marshall wagon or if you listen to the podcast we can drop in the in the in the um the comment section they'll they'll 
in the comment section, and the comment section, in the note section, right? And you can reach out. Or you can join our community on Facebook, a community of uh, mothers and caregivers with um, typical children and special children alike. But we all face the same or similar challenges, right? We're all working in relationships. We're all working on figuring out um, education, right? And so we might have children who are unique, but we have similar needs. And so I want to go on that journey with you, all right? Did you enjoy this? Would you need to have more information like this? Anything, you know, questions that come up, whatever it is, I want to hear from you. Because that's what's going to make the difference is we build each other up, right? And so when I learn, you learn. I learn, I do, I teach. You ask, you get some answers, you go create your unique jig, right? So thank you so much for your time. Share this information with your friends and your foes and your groups. And I would love to know if you have more questions and what are these, those questions so we can source them questions and we can all learn for the betterment of ourselves, our families, our children and society. This is Marcia saying, follow us on uh, YouTube, Instagram, um, TikTok, different social platforms. I'll just drop a link right there and you can find them in there. Or if you're someone out there and you want to donate to our cause, uh, we have a nonprofit so called Our Voice for the Voiceless, which is Down Syndrome and other special needs support. And so we have a podcast if you'd love to be a podcast guest sharing your story, your journey. We'd love to sit on and chat with you and to hear your, your journey or your overcame, the business, what you're doing, the difference that you're making in your life, in your community, and in society. Marcia saying, thank you so much for your time. It was well worth it. And so share this information. And whatever the states that you're in, substitute the guideline and you just follow through. Until next time, Marcia is saying, what good? And just keep treating somebody else as you would like to be treated.